Hit it. Hit it. super cute Christmas tree scrubby. This is a great stocking stuffer. It will be perfect for a little kid's gift and maybe wrap it up with a bar of soap and they can play with this while they're in the tub washing during the holiday season. I'm going to make one today actually out of some really pretty colors for my niece, uh, pink and green. I think that she'll just love it. For this particular project, all you need to do is download the free pattern from redheart.com. The link to that is right down there in the video notes, so you don't have to go searching for it. And then this requires two balls of the Red Heart Scrubby yarn. Now you only need one ball of each color, and you can use any color you want. It doesn't have to be red and green. You can use anything. You could also use more colors if you decided you wanted to decorate the tree with a little bit more flair. Totally up to you. So go ahead, download your pattern, gather your materials, Join me back here. I'm going to get you started on this wonderful project. You have your pattern and your materials. Let's go ahead and get started. As you look down here at the Christmas tree, you can see it's done in two parts. You have the base of the tree in one color, and then you have the actual body of the tree in another color. You're going to complete this project still working um, on the base when we go into the tree, meaning these aren't done in two separate pieces and then seamed together. We're going to make the base first, and then we're going to change colors, cast on stitches for the tree, work all the way across, and then cast on stitches for this side of the tree. Once we go beyond that point, we work our decreases in the specified intervals that are written out in the pattern. And at the very top here, we'll be left with one stitch We'll cast on stitches in the same manner we did down here to create this loop. And then you just sew the loop down so that way you have a little something to hang on to or hang on your bathroom um, bathtub. Now that we know how it's constructed, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and I am using a pair of needles that are one size larger than the size you will use for your project. Just because I think it's easier for you to see what I'm doing on camera with these needles. I'm going to start off by putting a slip knot directly onto my needle. If you need instructions on how to do a slip knot, you can check those out right here in the video called Slip Knot on the Marley Bird channel. I'm going to cast on a total of, how many stitches do I need to cast on? 16. And we're going to do that with a knitted cast on. So to do a knitted cast on, I have my slip knot on my left hand needle. I take my right hand needle, I go into that stitch, yarn over my right hand needle, Pull that yarn over through the stitch. Now, I'm going to extend the stitch that's on my right hand needle, swing around, take my left hand needle, and put that stitch on my left hand needle. Okay? I'm going to do that again, but now I'm going to do it into the new stitch. I go into the new stitch, yarn over just like I'm knitting, come through the stitch just like I'm knitting, but I extend up that left, that right hand stitch, and then take my left hand needle, and I'm coming around, I'm going to put it on like this. I don't want to come into the, the stitch like this, okay? I want to come around to the right side of the stitch and swing and put it on. I'm going to do that for a total of 16. You have your 16 stitches cast on now, and we're going to work in garter stitch until this piece measures 2 inches. So garter stitch is just knitting every row. So I'm at the end of my row, I'm going into the stitch just like I've been doing, but now when I come out the stitch with my knit stitch, I'm going to let that stitch from my left hand needle jump off. So I'm going in, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. I'm going to do this with the yarn in my right hand as well, so you guys can see how that works. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. and continue on in garter stitch until this piece of your tree, the tree stand, measures two inches. Once you have two inches, join me back here and we will cast on for some extra stitches for the tree. Alright, so you have the base of your tree and it's time to cast on some stitches for your tree. Look down here, I'm going to show you how you do that. 
as you look down here, you can see I have my two inches, and I've done it in green because I'm going to make my tree in pink for my knees, if you remember. And so the first thing I've done is I've cut my yarn that I was working with, uh, leaving at least six inches. I like to leave six inches because it makes it so much easier to weave in my tails after the fact. I'm going to take my new yarn, and what I'm going to do is, with the scrubby yarn, it's really great because I can just tie my new yarn right onto my old yarn with a knot and cinch it up real close to my knitting needle, okay? So now my new yarn is just, it's just tied to the green. So the pink is tied to the green, and I'm ready to start just using my pink yarn, okay? So it's ready to go. Now the first thing I've got to do is I've got to cast on some extra stitches to make our nice little tree here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast on 10 stitches using the knitted cast on just like we did before. So I haven't turned, you know, I finished my work and it's in my left hand. I'm going to take my right hand needle, go into that last stitch I completed, and now I'm going to yarn over with my new yarn. And just like before, I'm going to pop that new yarn through, extend it up. Take my left hand needle and scoop and put that on, okay? So I need 10 of them. If you decide, you know what, maybe I don't want to do 10, I want to make it a little shorter and stuff, it will interfere with your decreases later on as you're going along because you won't have to do as many or you'll have to do more increases depending on how many stitches you do. So I highly recommend you just go ahead and cast on the 10 stitches as it's written in the pattern. Michelle Wilcox has done a really good job with um, making this the perfect size. It really is a great uh, size for adults and children, actually, because it's big enough to really go over the whole hand, and you can hang on to it and mess around with it. And I just, I know my niece is going to have a great time with this. I actually made a blue and white one for my nephew, too. Um, you'll get to see that one later on. But as I'm going along here, I've just been casting on. I think I have a couple more I need to do, so I'm going to go back, and I'm going to count real quick. So to count these... It's really easy to count if you can kind of disregard the fuzziness and look for the stitch as it's resting on your needle. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have two more that I need to put on here. So there's one. If I can extend this out. And then two. So now I have my ten. And the next part of the instructions say that I need to work in garter stitch. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to work across these ten stitches I just cast on and I'm going to continue on across these 16, okay? So it's going to join this whole row. It might seem a little bit odd because you're going to be like, well, wait a minute, I, I have, I'm going to have one extra row of this pink down here, right, where it's not over here on this side. It doesn't make a difference in this, you guys. It, it really, you won't be able to um, tell. And the kids especially aren't going to be able to tell. So this is perfectly fine that we are casting on on one side and not the other until the next row. And as you can see, I'm just knitting down these stitches all the way down. And because I tied my pink onto my green, I, I don't have a loose stitch right there. See that? My stitches are not real super loose. They, they're still nice and snug. And I can just pop right on over and start working with the green. I know you're not supposed to put knots in your knitting and knots in your crochet, but I feel comfortable and confident enough to say you can go ahead and put a knot into this yarn particularly because it just, it really holds it really well and the, the fiber of the yarn allows it to have that knot to it and it'll just grab and make sure that um, it doesn't go anywhere. It just makes it easier. You don't have the tails hanging out once everything's woven into. It won't come undone with use. All right, so I'm at the end of my row which completes that, whoops, that whole row, right? And I have to cast on for my other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my needle in my left hand, and just like before, I'm going to go into that last stitch, and I'm going to do the knitted cast on. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to do 10 more. In, extend, and there's one. Now this time, it's not going to be as easy to count my 10, right? Because they're the same color. Last time it was real easy because I had... 10 pink and, and then the rest were green. So I want to make sure I try and keep count this time. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. So 
So I have my 10 stitches cast on. I'm going to set this down so you can see what's going on here. So this is going to be the, the bottom part of my tree. If you can see the tree right here, let's pull these down a little. So here's the base of my tree and here's the sample. Here are going to be this part of the tree right there and then this part of the tree right here. Once you have those 10 stitches cast on, you're going to knit all the way back down the row. So now you have all pink stitches on your needle, okay? So you shouldn't have any green. Everything should be pink or whatever color you're using. Once you do that, you need to work in garter stitch for three more rows. Go ahead and do that and join me back here. I'm going to show you how we're going to work the decreases. And then I'm going to jump over and I'm going to show you how you work the top part of the tree. You've done three rows of garter stitch. Now it's time to work a decrease. And this is the decrease you're going to be using throughout the body of the tree. So look down here and let me show you how to do that. As you look down here, you can see I still have the base of the tree done. And now I've completed my three rows of garter stitch. And it's time for me to do a decrease. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick this up. And the first part of the instructions say I need to do a knit two together. So right here, I'm going to knit this stitch and this stitch together. So instead of just going into one stitch, I'm going to go into the second one and the first one together at the same time. Once I do that, I knit as regular, as I regularly do, pop it through, and then I'll have both of these stitches jump off. Now, here's something that I like to do because I tend to lose count when I'm doing decreases, is I take one of these removable stitch markers and I will just place it right on that stitch, okay? What that's going to do is as I'm working along in the pattern and I'm like, how many decreases have I done? I can go back and I can just count my stitch markers and say, okay, so that was the first decrease. Here's three rows. Here's my second decrease. Maybe here's five rows. Here's my third decrease, whatever it may be. So I like using my stitch markers in that way. Do you have to use a stitch marker like that? Absolutely not. It's just my little tip for you to kind of help you keep track. The other way to keep track is, of course, to count your stitches all the time and know where you are in your pattern as well. But I find that difficult to count rows doing that. So once you do a decrease at the start, you're going to knit to the very end. And you can see here I'm just knitting with my right hand. It's the same knit motion as when I have the yarn in my left hand. I'm just holding the yarn in my right hand. I'm going to go down to the last two stitches and I'm going to do the knit two together again because you want to make sure you're doing the shaping on both sides of the tree, otherwise you have a lopsided tree. If that's what you're going for, hey, great. Maybe it's something like um, how the Grinch stole Christmas sort of, you know, kind of crazy tree. <laughs> that's what you want to go for. It's a design feature, right? That's what we call it when we make mistakes like that. If you don't want to have a special design feature tree and you want it to be symmetrical, you want to make sure you do your decreases on both sides of the tree at the same time. So you'll do one at the beginning and then one at the very end. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to switch hands here, put my yarn in my left hand because I tend to actually knit faster that way. Now that I've said that, watch, I'll go nice and slow. This is my go-to. This is called Continental, if you don't know. The other method is called English. And then there is also another method called Combination. But we aren't going to go into that today. I just thought I'd throw those out there as um, information. So now you, you have more information. The more you know, right? All right, so I'm almost here to the very end, the last two stitches. And I'm going to do my knit two together, just like I did before. So I'm going to take this the last stitch and this stitch, and I'm going to put my right hand needle into both of those stitches and just knit them together just like before. Now, I don't put a stitch marker on this side, but you absolutely could. Maybe that's your clue of, okay, I want to make sure I have my stitch marker there to remind me that I have to do a decrease over there. Because sometimes you can get going along, you'll do, you'll do your decrease at the beginning, and you forget to do it at your end. So it's whatever helps you. The stitch markers are there to help you along, okay? So you can't really tell the shaping is going on right now, but as you begin working along the body of the tree, the shaping will happen more and more. I'm going to show you what that is going to look like, okay? So let's bring in the one that I made for my nephew. And you can see here, here's my cast on stitches, my extra stitches, and I began my shaping right here. And then I worked the, the specified number of rows that were written in the pattern and did my shaping again continually throughout the entire tree. What I want you to do is go ahead and continue following along the pattern, knitting uh, in garter stitch for the specified number of rows, and then doing your decreases until you get down to one stitch. 
Once you have that one stitch, join me back here. I'm going to show you how to do the loop. This little loop, which is great for hanging your scrubby on uh, the bathtub or on your sink or what have you. And so we're going to do that. And then the very last thing we'll do is do the slip stitch decorating on the tree. Oh, you're almost done. I promise this last part doesn't take very long at all. Look down here, I'm going to show you how to do the hanging. Look down here, you can see that I have my little Christmas tree complete. And you can see all of my stitch markers that I added on there just to keep track of my decreases. I just find it really easy to do that. I have decreased all the way down to where I had one stitch left. And I've gone ahead and I've cast on my 15 stitches using the knitted cast on just like we've done before. I feel like you've already seen me do that. You don't need to watch me do that again. Once I have those stitches cast on, all I'm going to do is knit across all of those stitches, and then I'm going to bind off. So let's go ahead and knit across these stitches, just like we have been going uh, along the whole time. I'm just knitting each one. So I will have a total of 16 stitches, including the one left over from the Christmas tree after it was complete. And then once that's complete, we're going to do a bind off. And we're just going to do a very simple, generic, uh, knit two stitches, have the back one, jump the front one, bind off. But I want to show you how to do that. So I'm down here at the end, and I'm going to turn my work. And we're going to bind off this row. So I'm going to knit two stitches. Knit one. Knit two. And then I'm going to have the back stitch jump up and over the front stitch. Just like that. Take my left hand needle off. So I'm left with one stitch on my right hand needle. I knit one more from my left. Have the back stitch jump up and over the front stitch. And I'm going to do this all the way down until I have all of those stitches bound off. That one didn't jump the whole way. This is actually really fast. It doesn't take that long. And you don't have to worry about binding off too tight. You know how sometimes you will do projects and it'll say make sure you bind off loosely? For this one, it doesn't matter. We just want it bound off. Um, whether it's tight or loose, it really doesn't even matter for this. The nature of the yarn itself makes it that it's going to be perfect no matter what we do here. I really like this yarn. I find it easy to work with. I find it easier to knit with than to crochet with, but it is not impossible to crochet with. It actually, um, there's some really super cute scrubbies out there that are crocheted with it. But I find knitting with it to be a lot easier. So I think that whether you're a beginner or an advanced knitter, you'll have no problem working with this yarn. Once I'm here at the end, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut a tail, leaving at least six to eight inches. And the reason I'm making sure that I leave eight inches is because I'm going to use my tail to sew this in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my steel tapestry needle, and you can see this one has a bent tip to it. I really like using the bent tip steel tapestry needles with the big eye, and I'm going to just thread it through there. And now all I'm going to do is my little tab here, I come down here to the base, and just working through this last knit three together that you did, I'm going to pull the tail all the way through, hopefully, just like that, and I'm going to start just stitching it into place. It doesn't have to be, uh, like, absolutely perfect, or, you know, you don't have to worry about stitches not showing because the yarn is going to hide everything, and you just want to make sure it's nice and secure and in place. Once this is stitched into place, you'll cut your tail, you know, cut your ends so it's not hanging out, weave in all your loose ends, and we will do the garland part. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this tail so you can see. I'm making sure it's really nice and secure. And I'm just going in and out all of the stitches. You can see why using a steel tapestry needle is really important. If I were using a plastic tapestry needle at this point, I could have broken it because I'm, trying, I'm going through this really forcefully. But the steel one, it makes it really easy to work through. Just several different times. I feel like that's nice and secure right there separate that out. So if I take my tapestry needle off, I can see, look, it's nice and secure. I can cut this right up close to the end. And that part is complete. So my loop is done. 
and it's time for me to do my garland. Now, I'm going to make sure I put my garland on the opposite side because you can see right here where the color changes with the green and the pink. I'm going to consider that to be my wrong side. So I'm going to flip this over and I want my garland to show up on this side. And in order to do that, we are going to need to grab a crochet hook. No, that is not a bad word, ladies and gentlemen. A crochet hook is going to be your friend when you're working with this project, okay? Well, I'm using a J crochet hook, which is a size 10 or a 6 millimeter. And we're going to go ahead and grab your base color yarn, or if you want to use a different color, you could do that. So for me, I decided I wanted to use some white. So I'm going to use white for the garland for this. And I'm going to turn the tree upside down because we're actually going to start at the top of the tree and work across just kind of draping the garland using slip stitches with our crochet hook. If I bring in the sample, you can see that's exactly what Michelle Wilcox did. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You can go in any direction you want to. Say you wanted to make this some sort of like a plaid looking tree, you absolutely could do that. It's really super easy. What we're essentially going to do is I'm going to have my yarn underneath the tree. I'm going to stick, I'm going to just show you this real quickly. I'm going to stick my hook into the tree at any particular space. Let's say I stick it right there. So it's going to look like this. So this is what it's going to look like on the other side, okay? On the other side, I'll have my yarn. I'm going to grab it with my crochet hook and pull it through where I pulled out. Then I'll stick it into another spot, however far apart I want that garland to show. I'll go in underneath again, so I'm showing you the underneath section, not using the tail. Yarn over my hook, and then pull that yarn over up. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to pull that yarn over through the loop that was already created. Does that make sense so far? So let's do that down at the, or up at the top where we're going to do that. So I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to start over here a little bit in the corner because I'm going to have it just kind of draped that way. So let's say I'm going to put my hook just right there. And again, it doesn't matter where you put your hook. Just stick it in wherever you want it to start. And I just have, I've wrapped over my yarn. I've pulled up my initial loop. And now I'm going to decide where do I want this loop to go. So I can either have it go straight across or have it start to drop down a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have it go, oh, let's say right there. So I put my hook in. If I were to flip this over, you'll see I'm just yarning over my hook, pulling that yarn over up, and then pulling it right through that stitch. I'm going to drape it again. So let's see. I want it about that long, so let's just put it right there. On the other side, I'm yarning over my hook, pulling that yarn over up, and pull it through the loop that's on my hook. See how this is starting to decorate the tree? I'm not going to turn it upside down again for you. You can just see as you go along, just using your, you know, using your sense of feel, you'll know where to wrap the work, right? So I've gone all the way across. So now let's say I want to drop down and kind of scooch back this way. So it's just real simple. I just decide, okay, I'm going to drop down right there and let's add a piece of garland. And maybe I decide to go right here. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy tree needs to live right here. We're going to put some garland right there. And how about right there? This is this is where we need to put this next little drape of garland, right? Now, here's a little thing. Here's what's cool. If you decide, all right, I've dropped down too much. I really want it to maybe come up a little bit more. It is so easy to just fix this just by simply pulling out your stitches like that. You get back to a point where you want to start over again, and you just put your hook right back in there, and you start decorating once again. Now, if you decide you want to go ahead and maybe I decide I'm going to do the white, and then I go back and I do the green, I could just follow a different path. I don't have to follow along the white. This is where you can really use your artistic nature to decorate however you want. That's it. You finished your Christmas tree. It is so cute, and I can't wait to see all of your guys' out there. Um, again, this is the Christmas tree scrubby designed by Michelle Wilcox. It's a free pattern over at redheart.com, and you can also order the Red Heart scrubby yarn over there at redheart.com as well. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that like button, as my kids say. Give it a thumbs up so that way other people know that you enjoyed today's video. And come on back here and learn some other videos or some other um, scrubby patterns with uh, the other videos that are available. I'm Molly Bird for RedHeart.com. Thanks.